I'm going to do some random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong. If you're new to this version, look for a link below the video to a lesson playlist so you can learn the fundamentals and download this player reference. In here, we have the rules and then the scoring. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls starting with the East round. There are four rounds, if you don't already know, East, South, West, and North. So we'll do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round. If you get a three of a kind of the wind of the round, you get score for that. So that's a good variable to keep in mind. I'm also going to roll these dice just to randomize which seat we're in for the exercise. We just count around the table. So for this first exercise, I rolled a three. So starting with wherever you're sitting, we'll count around three, one, two, three, east, south, west. So we're going to be west. That's player three. So we're in west seat and it's east round. If we get a three of a kind of either of those, we'll get score for that. Again, if you want to know more about scoring and about how to play Hong Kong Mahjong, look for a link in the video description. So as non-dealer, I'm going to get 13 tiles. So for this hand, we have a pair here, a pair here, and here. Three pair. Any pair is a potential pung, which is a three of a kind. I think that's what I would try for here. Three of a kind. All pung. All three of a kind. Here we have a five, six, seven. Even though that looks good. If you mix a chow with pungs in different suits, none of these will be of value. The honors, winds and dragons, may bring you value. But when you mix a chow with a pung in a different suit, this will be of no value at all. So that's why I would discard these, probably, as a chow. I would try to pair up and... If we get two more pair, we could go for all pung. If you're going to play all pung, having four pairs is going to be better. But three pairs not bad. And we have a pair of dragons. If we can pung that pair of dragons, we can get score for that alone. So dragons in Hong Kong Mahjong are valuable if you pair up in pung. So here... I would do all pung, dragon pung. That would be four fawn. Now, if we were playing at a zero point table where there's no minimum, I think I would maybe play dragon pung and I would pung and chow and just go for a dragon pung alone and just win with that minimum. If the pairing up comes before a win, then I would probably try to play all pung still. But when you're playing at a zero fawn table, a lot of times people are going to win with what's called a chicken hand where you have no score at all. So I think I would ho maybe hold this for a little while. See if we could pair up though. And I would go for all pung. All pung and dragon pung. So that was the f east round pull. East pull. So now... We're going to go to south round. East, south, west, north. So this is going to be south round. And this time I rolled a seven. So that's actually going to be player three again. So we're going to be in west seat again. South round, west seat. Non-dealer, so we'll get 13 tiles. So for these tiles, 
we're in west seat. That's player three. Here's a pair of west. So if we get a pung of our seat, that'll be a fawn right there. And then we're in south round. So if we can pair up and pung, that could also bring a score. If we pair up and pung the white dragon, that can bring a score. So these are valued honors. Here we have four bams and four cracks. This is gonna get a little sticky here because if we play, for example, a half flush, which is three fawn, we would have to discard five tiles, which is pretty significant. The thing about the cracks is we have a pair in here. There's one potential chow there. There's a potential chow here or here. These are isolated, the one and the nine. So I think what I would probably do here is discard the one first and then the nine, see what comes in. We only have two pair, so I would not probably try for all pung. I think what I might do here, because we have a pair of five cracks, I think I would try to hold cracks. Discard the one dot first. See what happens with these bams. If we draw in cracks, go for a half flush. Now, if that was the situation and there was a minimum three fawn set, that would be a good plan. But if there's a no minimum, like a zero fawn table, then I would probably try for my seat win only and then just win wherever I could. So we could chow here. These are isolated. We could maybe even pung here, but that would leave two isolated tiles. So either way, I think I would hold those. But here, I would probably hold these bams because we could chow two, three, four, three, four, five, or four, five, six. So I think probably I would discard these first, see what comes in, and go for my seat wind only. If there were a no zero fawn minimum. Three fawn minimum, push for half flush, seat wind. Zero fawn, mixed chows, pungs, whatever with the number tiles and just leverage this pair of wins. See if we could pair up and pung those too, that would be nice. So that was for south round. Now we're gonna do west round. And we're going to be in the first seat, east, or eight, actually no. If this is eight, nine, 10, 11 would be west again. So I was thinking nine, but 11 is west. So we're gonna be in west seat again. West seat. So we're non-dealer. I will get 13 tiles. We have mixed suits, four, three, five, one wind. And that is our seat, west, but it's a single. That's not gonna be helpful as a single, we need more. We're in west seat and it's west round. So I think here we have two pair, four and threes here. I think what I would do is discard the seven first. Discard the seven first, try to pair up for all pung. With only two pair, that's gonna be a push. That would be my plan if this were a three fawn minimum. If it is a zero fawn table where you have no minimum, you could just win with anything, I would just go for all chow. There's a seven, eight, pair fours, isolated. Here's a potential chow and here's a potential chow. We need five blocks. 
one, two, three, four. So all we need in here is another chow. We have a pair, so we just need another chow. So I think what I probably would do here, if, if I were gonna play all chow, which is only one fawn, I would probably discard this one first and then see if we could build in more chow potential with the numbered tiles. The edge tiles, since you can only build from the edge in for a one and the edge back for a nine, so we could only do a one, two, three or a seven, eight, nine, those are going to be the least efficient tiles to hold. But I would hold the cracks just in case we start drawing more cracks since that is what we have the most of by one tile. So I think I would discard the one bam, see if we could do more chows, because we really just need two more potential chows to make this work. We have one, two, three potential chows and a pair. We really just need one more chow potential in here to make an all chow hand work. And you can mix suits with chows, but it's only gonna be one fawn. So just make sure you know what the minimum is. If this is a zero fawn minimum, or even a one fawn minimum, all chow would be just fine. And I probably would hold the west, because if we pair up, we could get score for that since we're in west seat and it is the west round. We're doing north round now. This time I rolled a seven. So we're going to be in west seat again. I think something's wrong with these dice. I don't think so. All right, anyway. So we're gonna be in west seat again, non-dealer. I'll get 13 tiles. got a flower that's a two flower we won't get score for that we need a three flower or a four flower for these tiles we have mostly bams one two pair we have an east and five off suit so I think what I would do here is go for BAMs. One suit and honors. One suit with winds and dragons. Discard these. I'd probably hold the terminals, which are ones and nines, because we do have a pair here and three tiles. Let's see, three. We have two more BAMs than we do just honors alone which include terminals there. I would throw these away first and see about maybe a half flesh. Here we have a potential chow, potential pung, potential pung, or potential chow. So I think what I would do is hold all the bams, just gather bams and winds and dragons, and then discard on this end first. If we pair up, we could try for all pung, but if I drew in BAMs, I would try for a half flush, one suit with winds and dragons, or maybe even a full flush if we can get some more BAMs. A six BAM in here would be great, six or seven BAM, because then we could chow, pung, pung, chow. If we can get some chow potential in here, that would be great. If we were playing at a zero fawn table, we could play a chicken hand. Chow, chow, pung, pung. One, two, three, four, and then pair up any one of these. Mixing chows and pungs and mixed suits would be zero value, zero fawn. 
So if we took this to, to Chow's with Pung's, that would be a zero fawn hand, also called a chicken hand. So if your game allows chicken hands, go for it. That would be a really quick win. When you play a live game, always ask what the point minimum is because that way when you get your dealt hand, you can make a plan for the tiles that you have. If you're playing at a zero fawn minimum, you could play a chicken hand and just chow and pung regardless of what you have in your hand. But if you're playing with a group with a three fawn minimum, for example, you've got a fine score. That's where this comes in. You can study the scoring elements to make sure that you have components of your hand that are going to qualify you to win. That also applies to playing online. There are tables at Mahjong time, for example, that have a zero fawn minimum. And there are tables that require eight points, which equates to three fawn. So it's really important to know the scoring elements so that you're prepared to play online or live with a point minimum. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to click the little gray bell then. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.